Hey everybody, given the new balance changes with Chivalry 2 and the differences between before and after, I'd like to talk about a new tier list as well as the changes to the meta. To go over the changes very briefly, Rapier was made faster with more damage on its stab, the short sword had its damage decreased, the one-handed spear was made slower and with less overhead damage, the sword was made to have less stab damage, Dane Axe was made slower, the Highland Sword has a slower overhead, and the special windup is not only faster, but it also d makes the special do less damage. The slash damage and he heavy slash damage have also been nerfed on the Highland Sword. Long Sword and Messer Stab has been increased as well. But more importantly than anything I just said, is that Blunt Weapons now deal 25% more stamina damage, and Chop Weapons now deal 10% more stamina damage. These two points are significant. Probably the most important points out of the- out of any change in the last year. This dramatically changes how weapons match up and how good everything is. This tier list is based on team objective as well as duels, focusing more on being able to work in both. However, I do think that team play is a bit more valuable than duel play, as long as a weapon is not incapable of fighting in a duel. Weapons that struggle in duels, I feel, are not great, but weapons that cannot fight more than one person, I also feel, are not great. With that out of the way, let's talk. Right away, the cudgel is probably still awful. It's, it's horrible. It is short, it does bad damage, even with the stamina changes, it still does no stamina damage. It does better, but even so. This is a weapon made for people who do not think and they just press the button. Next up is the shovel, a shell of its former self. Even though that Blunt Weapons got a boost and this, the shovel is no exception, it does not do good enough damage to really take advantage of that, and it's still very short. And although it's a little bit fast, you do have to play Engineer. And the other two options for Engineer are better than the shovel is by a large margin. If you like the funny sound it makes, well, then that's your reason to use it, not because it's good. It's not incapable. It's just horrible. I don't think you could win a 2v1 with this weapon, and I feel that you probably couldn't win a duel with this weapon, reliably, of course, because, you know, I myself could probably win a 3v1 with the shovel, but that's not because, that's not because it's good, it's because I am probably one of the best players in this game when I'm playing well. Next up is the hatchet. I almost, I, I was thinking about putting the hatchet down in unusable, but I'm going to put it in not very good, mainly because the overhead heavy damage is 70. And that is boosted a lot by the stamina changes. It is doing a lot of stamina for a secondary weapon that most people have access to if they have that tier of secondary. It, it does hit very hard. However, the only reason, that's like the only reason it's not down here. The range is awful. The attacks are awful. The damage on everything else it has is also horrible. This is just a, it's a bad weapon. It's a bad weapon that has like an, an attack that does a lot of damage. That's pretty much it. Next up is the knife. The knife is not very good as a weapon, but I feel it's a good secondary. I feel that it's good at getting you out of death, but if you fight two people with the knife, you're probably going to lose. With the reduced counter windows on fast weapons as well, I feel that it really does struggle to defend yourself a little bit. You have to be really on point with your counters, but it is a fast, it's a fast weapon that I can use if I lose my main weapon to get the person off of me to pick my main weapon back up, which is pretty much the only reason you'd use it. And in that reason, I pick the knife as my secondary of choice, but that's just me. Next up is the glaive. I don't think the glaive is great. It's long. Now I'll put the glaive in mid tier. It's a long weapon. It's fast, and that's all it does. It got a stamina boost this update but unlike the war club it's just it doesn't hold itself together no i'm putting the glaive down here the war club does more stamina damage as well as more damage on some of its attacks the playstyle for these weapons is usually to hit people and then immediately like back off or to just like you know gamble attacks and just throw out attacks all over the place and in that regard i feel it's it's kind of not amazing. I say it a lot, but you can beat a glaive user, and in some degree a war club user, by simply just parrying their attack and then reposting. And they just, they'll lose the stamina fight, 
almost 100% of the time. You don't have to counter anything they do. And anytime they go for a gamble, you're just going to kill them. I fought a, a good Glaive user, and I challenged them to this theory. And it's not that they were bad, but I beat them 10-0 when I fought them. And of course, you could say that it was just, you know, it's because it's me. But I'm just going to say right now, the Glaive is not very good. The Sledgehammer. It's... It's an engineer weapon. It hits pretty decently hard. It's short. It's stylish because it's a hammer. And if you want to play engineer, it is a decent pick. With the stamina changes, it's going to do all right. But it's not a great weapon. It's short. It's it's pretty fast. But it's just not amazing. Same with the pickaxe, which is kind of like a hatchet or a one-handed axe, but a little longer. It's okay. A pickaxe is definitely fine. But I don't know, I don't think it's fantastic. But I will say, the pickaxe is probably better than the current short sword. I would rather use, I'd rather use the pickaxe than the short sword. I'd probably rather use the sledgehammer than the short sword as well. Short sword is, it's, it was never my preferred secondary and definitely not now that they've nerfed the damage. I, when, it, when it did 50 stab damage, my god, you know, th there's no reason not to use it. But now that it does 40 stab damage and the other attacks aren't great. I don't like it. I don't want to use it. I'd rather use the knife. The, but the knife is not better than the short sword. The dagger. I like the dagger. It's not great. It's it's a mid-tier weapon at best. It is too short. It is easily dodged. But the special attack and the damage it does can be very, very nice. And now that the short sword is nerfed, it really stands out on its own. Thank goodness. Good for you, dagger. I sure hope they buff you to be able to cleave one day. War club. The War Club is not a weapon I like very much, and I have not found very many, if any, good War Club users. Same with the same thing as like the Glaive. Not that the people who are using it are bad, again, I just don't think it's a very good weapon because it's beaten mainly by just parrying and reposting. However, the War Club has the highest damage between it and the Glaive of a 45 damage light overhead, which is good, and then also the stamina damage buff it helps the War Club a lot more as well. You're doing a lot more damage to people's stamina in a very quick attack that is very hard to counter. And that gives it a lot more pressure. So, overall, I think the War Club has moved up pretty well in this update. I'm glad to see it. Poleaxe. Poleaxe is, in my opinion, straight worse than the Halberd. It is faster, but it does less damage Overall, nothing on the Polex does more damage than the Halberd. It's not noticeably faster. It's shorter. It's the shortest pole arm, but the shortest pole armor is still longer than the Great Sword, so take that as you will. And the slashes on the Polex are very bad, doing about 40 damage, which is what Halberd did pre buff. It's not the worst weapon in the game, and it's stylish, but the special attack only does 70 damage, which is the same as its heavy stab and heavy overhead. And I don't really think it's super great. I would still use it over the War Club and any weapon below it. But it is not a fantastic weapon, in my opinion. And the Executioner Axe. People will disagree with me until I die. This weapon is also worse than Halberd. It's good at cleaving through crowds with heavy attacks. Mainly the heavy slash and nothing else. But it doesn't really have much to stand on other than that. The stamina buff helps, but it's not a good dueling weapon. And it has very... I don't like... The overhead doesn't have great range, in my opinion. It's about the same as the slash, but then why wouldn't you just do a slash? Maybe I'm just too used to pole arms in the way that the overheads go a lot longer than the slashes do. But it's a weapon that just... It's not... I don't like it. I don't like it, and I don't think there's a reason to use it over the Highland Sword now, or the Halberd. It sort of just regressed into the shadows of those weapons. Next up, everybody's favorite, the Maul. The Maul is not a fantastic weapon, but I think it's. I think I can start calling it good. The stamina damage on this is insane. The special attack has a base damage of 120. 30% of 120 added with the 25% bonus, is now doing 45 stamina damage on a special attack, which is almost a, an archer's entire stamina bar. That's wild. That That's fucking wild, dude. I dig it. Other than that, it now just has a lot more pressure behind it, which is what it was supposed to have, and I feel that now it can make the other qualities of the Maul shine a lot stronger. Good for you, Maul. You deserve it. The Falchion. 
used to be my favorite secondary, but now I'm not so sure. No, I still like the Falchion. It's, it's good. But now that swords have been decreased a little bit in their presence, I feel that it's a little bit weaker than some of the other options. It's a very good weapon, though. The one-handed axe, I feel like it got better. I used to think this was my favorite secondary until the Falchion came along. Now it might be back to the one-handed axe because of the stamina changes. More pressure is good. The Morning Star and the Mace, which are the same weapon. These two are better than ever with more stamina damage. The same thing. Blunt weapons got a huge boost in this update. They are just really good. I'm very, very happy with the changes to stamina because it's making those those blunt weapons really stand out as much stronger counters to it's making those blunt weapons it's making blunt weapons really stand out as like powerhouses which is what they were supposed to be and they're largely countered by vanguards who have more stamina to make up for that difference and also take less blunt damage than any other class overall as a an effective health i've done the math in my combat guide if you haven't seen it you should it's still not outdated the war axe it's good it's like the Danax, but you don't get two of them, and you don't do a billion damage on a throw, but you can play Officer, and Officer's a cool class, and it's definitely not a bad weapon. Two-handed Mace and Two-handed Hammer. These two are basically the same, but the Two-handed Mace has a better special and better stab damage, and the Two-handed Hammer has is a little bit faster, and has a worse stab and worse special attack. Uh, they're both very good. They both got a buff. Previously, the only thing holding them back was bad stamina damage. Now the stamina damage is good. Now they're good. Battle Axe, my beloved. I love the Battle Axe. Battle Axe is so much fun. If you haven't tried the Battle Axe, honestly, you should. The It has one downside. It's short. Everything else about it is fantastic. It's slow enough to land drags. It's fast enough to be really aggressive and put a lot of pressure on. It's good enough to 1vx extremely well. It does some of the best stamina damage in the game. It does some of the best damage in the game. Seriously, it's, it's fantastic. Give it a try. And on to high tier. We've got the Rapier. This thing went from being awful to being very good in pretty much a single update. It's really fast. It has a lot of... It has a unique playstyle that's awkward to fight against. The animations are very hard to read in comparison to the other weapons. I don't think they're too hard, but they're harder. It's got a unique special attack, which can be used as sort of like a safe combo. You hit somebody with the rapier, and then you combo to a special, and you can really surprise people. And even though it doesn't do fantastic damage, it does stun people on contact, which is good. And it's mobile, and that's potentially good as well. It's a weapon worth using now, and that's fantastic to hear. Warhammer. This thing is like fighting Mike Tyson. It's so fast, and does such good damage, and does so much stamina damage, it feels like you don't want to fight it. I don't think it's too good, but I definitely think it's extremely powerful and extremely potent, which is what it should be because Guardian sucked so bad and now you have a reason to actually play them. One-handed spear. It's a one-handed spear. Even with the nerfs, it's still going to be good and the special attack is nuclear. It is probably one of the safest one-handed weapon in the game to play. Safest. Not best, safest. And you can see where I placed it on the tier list. It's really easy to use as well. Danax also known as a cruise missile. Press G to delete the person in front of you with 93 damage. This thing uh, is a monster. It's like the War Axe, but it's faster and a little bit shorter and you get two of them. And that's really all it needs to be, is just really hyper aggressive. It's got great damage. And again, the throw on it is fantastic. This might as well be called a throwing weapon in my opinion. Next up is the Highland Sword, which I feel is only held back by its bad special attack. Special attack on the Highland Sword is not good, and that's pretty much one of the only downsides it has. The slow part about it, that's not really a downside. That is a trade-off, because the slower a weapon is, like the Highland Sword, which is the slowest, the better your swing manipulation is. You can do a lot of crazy movement with this, and a lot of crazy hits with this, and it feels really scary to go up against somebody who's really good with this thing. Like me, probably. My friend Fling Peon recently just had a, a game where he got 230 takedowns in a single match, which is not only his record, it's also, I think, the highest I've ever seen. That game was especially lucky, however, because it went on forever, and he was basically carrying his entire team, which, you know, gives you more opportunity to actually hit people and get kills and takedowns and stuff. And the longer a match goes on, the more takedowns you're going to get. But even so, that's more than impressive. 
It is a fantastic weapon. I don't think it's overpowered. There are people who think Highland Sword is overpowered. I do not think it's overpowered. I think the weapons I'm going to place above, which you can see at the bottom, are better than the Highland Sword. Now, Highland Sword is one of my favorite weapons. I can perform the best in 1vx with it, but that's because I'm not doing special attacks in 1vx. In the scenarios where I'm fighting a 1vx, a good special attack is not going to save me. Which means oh, the Highland Sword, having its only drawback being that it doesn't have a good special attack, is completely negated. Because I don't need to do special attacks in a one, in, like when I'm fighting a 3v1 or a 4v1 or a 5v1. I need exactly what the Highland Sword offers. It is, it is the Gut Sword. I do not think it's the best weapon, but I think it's one of the most rewarding and empowering weapons. But I would definitely beat somebody using it with a weapon I'm comfortable with, like Halberd or something else that's really long. However, I'm just as likely to use it myself. I love the Highland Sword. And right above the Highland Sword, here it comes, the Great Sword. The Great Sword is solid. It's a completely solid weapon with barely any downsides at all. I like it. It's good. There's basically no reason to neglect it. Just because the Highland Sword came out and it became the biggest sword doesn't mean the Great Sword is any less good. The Great Sword has one of the best special attacks in the game. It's on Devastator, which is a huge plus, which is a huge plus. The stab is much better than Highland Swords, and that's it's it's faster by a lot, and it's still almost as long as the Highland Sword. I can do things with the Great Sword that I cannot do with the Highland Sword, and that is significant to me. I still pick the Highland Sword more than I pick the Great Sword, but I do really, really love the Great Sword. It is my, it is probably my my dueling weapon go-to. I might use it over the Highland Sword in in duels because of special attacks. Special attacks being really good at getting rid of a problematic player or putting on pressure and forcing the other person to be more aggressive. And it's just it's just a good weapon. I feel like no matter what they change in this game, this weapon is always going to be good. Next up is the three. The three you know, the one-handed sword, long sword, and the messer. These three used to be broken. With the stab changes, that has brought down their most potent thing. With the stamina changes, everything else is a little bit better, which means that the difference between these weapons and these other weapons are not as bad. And the one-handed sword got its damage nerf on its stab, which reduces its pressure, as well as having a smaller counter window, also makes it a less potent pick. Overall, I'm glad to see these weapons get pulled down from the broken tier to high tier, in my opinion, of course. I'm happy to see it. Next up, Pole Hammer. The Knight Deleter. The Knight Fucker. This thing is a monster. It has the best special attack in the game. It has the second most damage of any special attack, and the second most stamina damage of any special attack. While also, unlike the Maul, which has the most powerful... It just has better range, better speed, and you've got a really good weapon attached to it as well. Pole Hammer is objectively one of the best team fighting weapons in the game. For damage, for speed, for reach, it's a completely solid pick. If you use the default Pole Hammer skin, I love you because that's the Lucerne and it looks great. Lucerne, my beloved, why won't they give you blunt damage in Elden Ring? God, please. And on to the last two. Halberd is, in my opinion, the top of high tier. It is insane how much how good this weapon has gotten because of the small buffs. Before they buffed the stamina, it was pretty good. Now that they buffed the stamina, it is very very good, having incredible stamina damage, the best one of the best reaches of any weapon, only beaten by the two-handed spear. Some of the best damage in the game. The running attack on this will do 109 damage to knights and 87 damage to archers and vanguards, which is enough to actually take off the arm of an archer if you hit them in the arm with it, which feels great, by the way. It is just, it's a fantastic weapon. It is probably one of the best all around, and I am goddamn happy about it. This weapon deserves it. I love you, Halberd. It's a little bit slow, though. I mean, pole hammer is also a little bit slow, but it's, it's fine. It's not too slow to be used. And I feel that it's, I feel it's good. I think it's good. Overall, I think it's good. Last up is the two-handed spear, which goes into broken tier. Why? Because it is one of the easiest weapons to use in the game. It has one of the most potent and disgusting running attacks in the game. It is the longest weapon in the game. It is fast and has some, at high levels, has some incredibly disgusting mix-ups. There's a reason that in competitive play, well, competitive play, air quotes, you will see so many people using this weapon. 
even though those players are really good, I said it was easy to use, and that does apply at, at the top of the skill ceiling as well. You really just, you can just kind of stab with this weapon, and it works. And it's deadly, and it's dangerous, and even an average player, even a below average player, can pick this weapon up and be dangerous, just by being positioned in the right way. Sure, a spear user by themselves is going to struggle a little bit, but why would you be by yourself? And in a one-on-one, -on -one, it's still really good at duels. It's it's a good weapon. I got shown some tech with this weapon by a couple of really high-level players. And, I mean, it's really hard for even me to fight. And although I don't have an issue with this personally, jump stabs exist. Some people have said that jump stabs are unblockable. And they go through your parry and you can't counter them, stuff like that. Now, I've only been hit through my parry one time with a jump stab. However, that one time scared the shit out of me. When you try to block an attack and it just goes through your parry, that sucks. That's, that's horrible. And it did feel pretty bad. Now, I think maybe I'm lucky because I have good connection to servers and I play at a good frame rate and I've got pretty good reaction speed. And maybe that's why jump stabs often don't get through my parry. But if... If it's happening to a lot of people, I feel that that's a huge issue on top of everything else I just said. And in my opinion, that's probably why it's broken, and a lot of high-level players will also say it's broken. I don't know what they could do to fix it other than just remove or replace Footman's running attack. Which, by the way, is probably the most disgusting attack in the game. Like, archers are cheating because projectiles are cheating, but, like, the two-handed spear, but, like, the Footman running attack... The one that you hold the weapon forward and charge and, like, you just run into an enemy. That is un- You can't do anything about that unless they fuck up. You can't really reliably dodge it. It's got huge range. It's got huge damage. It's got huge stamina damage. It is just too good. It is too good. And that's my opinion on that. Anyway, this was the tier list. I hope you enjoyed this sort of laid-back talking video. Uh, I hope you learned a, a little bit. I hope you can see my- reasoning on this and hopefully in the next chivalry 2 update it won't completely dismantle everything i just said right now but if it does i'll just make another video fuck it take it easy i'll see you guys later tomorrow bye bye <laughs>